Hi everyone and welcome to CubeTube. So today we're going to discuss another element and you've probably already seen in the description that we're going to talk about the element 28, which is nickel. Now let's have a look at this. Thank you Engineered Labs for another beautiful cube. Let's have a look. So we got here these beautiful balls and the reason why they form these balls is very likely because of the atomic structure that they uh, that they have when they're melted and then re uh, recrystallize. Um, so yeah, atomic number twenty-eight. It's beautiful. It's beautiful again. Love this. So let's write down some properties, shall we? So we got here element twenty-eight. Its letters are N and I, and it has an atomic mass of 58.693, and yeah, the 4 doesn't fit, so I leave it at that, and wow, is it great. So, what can we tell about this beautiful element. Well, we can say about it that it has 28 protons and therefore 28 electrons when stable. Um, it's a solid, as you can see at room temperature, and uh, it can be found uh, in the isotopes 58, 62 and 64. Um, so that means it will have 30, 34 or 36 neutrons. Uh, its mass number, as we just written down, is therefore 58.6934. Um, it's a metal. It's a transition metal. What that is, I will explain in a, in a later video. And yeah, it can be found in this thing. And I have this. I'm going to remove one of my gloves. Or basically two of my gloves. So I got this. Um, when I was in Arizona last summer. Now these are pieces of meteorite, which are actually really, really nice. And they're pieces of the meteorite that basically, um, yeah, came down in Arizona, in Meteor Crater. Uh, so the actual crater looks like this. You can just search uh, some information in it. Now, 7% of these pieces are supposedly are supposedly nickel. And the fun part about it is that they're, they're actually magnetic, as you can see. I got a magnet here, and you can see that they're you know, just magnetic pieces, which is fun. Which you, you think that meteorites are like more like rock, but most of them are just containing, containing a lot of metals. So yeah, that was just a little bit of a, yeah, a little bit of sidetracking, but this is where you can, uh, can find nickel. Um, for for a long time, miners thought that they were uh, they they were dealing with copper when they um, when they dug it up. The problem was that it actually wasn't so uh, because it didn't have the same properties as copper. Um, and the miners thought that it was like sort of enchanted copper. Um, so they they used to call it specifically in German kupfernickel. Um, which basically means something like haunted copper, uh, and they thought like the, the 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 ghosts or the spirits of the mountains or the of the, of the forest they took out um, the 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 soul of the of the copper, and and this is what you got left with, which was of course not the case. Um, what was the case was that it was something totally different than copper, uh, and in 1751 we figured out that it was actually something totally different. And we decided to call it, well, uh, nickel uh, for these, um, yeah, for, the, for these ghosts, basically. A lot of people are uh, allergic to nickel and uh, it gives them a nasty rash. And it's basically about 20% of the people that is, uh, that is allergic to this. And it's actually quite, quite toxic uh, to them. So then the important question, what can you do with nickel? What do we use it for? Well, it is used a lot in alloys. And alloys are basically substances that are composed of two or more metals, or 
maybe even something else. You can also use, uh, use different properties in there. So for instance, if you have nickel and you put it together with iron and then you throw also in a little bit of carbon, you get stainless steel. So this is basically how alloys are, are being created. And what you basically do with an alloy is you combine them. So you get a type of metal that is better than the sum of its parts. So two specific metals have certain properties. You then throw them together and you get something better. That's, that's basically what you do. Right? But we mostly also used in coins. Therefore, we call five cents in the US, for instance, a nickel. In China, people have used it uh, uh, for a very long time. And in the 1700s, uh, the, the English, uh, when they were trading there, they basically took the, in, yeah, took the tricks and, and, and tips around how you can use nickel. They took it back to England and uh, we started to use it in the West as well. And the thing was that, well, of course, 51 years later, we figured out that we could, uh, we could also dig, dig it from the ground. So that was, um, yeah, or at least we, we already had it for a long time. But we never really used it. It's also used as an alloy for cutlery. Um, it's used actually a lot uh, for cutlery, but yeah, a lot of people again are, um, are, are allergic to it. So it's not used that much anymore. Nickel, nickel could also be used uh, for pigment in uh, glass, basically adding a little bit of pigment to uh, when you are creating glass creates this sometimes a little bit of gray uh, type of, uh, of glass. In the past, it was used for white gold. Now, white gold was basically used because people wanted to actually have um, a platinum. But yeah, platinum is really expensive. So they decided to take gold, make an alloy with a bunch of other, other things, and nickel, and then create this distinct white gold uh, uh, thing. Um, you can also... Use it for storage for hydrogen. Hydrogen buses have uh, have big storage tanks of uh, of hydrogen. Um, nickel actually also uh, can absorb um, hydrogen a little bit, so this is why it's also used as um, as tanks for hydrogen buses, for instance. Um, it can also be used. Um, it, it was used for rechargeable batteries, so rechargeable batteries used to be nickel and then something else. Uh, but nowadays, basically all the, the nickel parts have been, um, have been replaced by lithium. And that's because it's lithium is more efficient and, uh, and can store more uh, electricity. Then there is an alloy and it's a very special alloy between nickel and titanium, which is called nitinol. Now nitinol has very strange properties and that is what we're going to discuss next week. So if you like this video and you want to see the experiment we're going to do next week with uh, Niti Noll, by all means, subscribe and uh, yeah, see you next week.